Get into and that. We have a, a good like friend, the gym. Uh, Craig Nunes, coming on. You got a tough act to follow there, uh, Craig. How you doing, man? Oh man, yeah, we, you know we didn't do that on purpose, but thanks for coming that's on. Like, that's again. like going. That was like My going to the gym. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. Boy, so you're kind of right out of the gate, setting the bar high. Well, Jay Shree set it pretty high, so. Uh, uh, a lot all of right, fun. I'm ready. So how you doing, man? I am doing well. Very We're rolling. Well. Okay. Big show. How's the traffic at the booth? We haven't been able to get Fantastic. by. Fantastic. Really? Yeah. Okay, so I'm excited uh, to have Craig Nunez on with the Cube with Dave and I because Craig has been a big, big supporter of the Cube. He's been on five, six times. Um, was at a fantastic company called Three Par, which we know because he's been on multiple times. Now part of HP. So yeah, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, what's changed since the last time you were on the Cube two months ago? <laughs> yeah, we were at uh, yeah. HP Discover, right? You guys yeah. had us out there, which yeah. was yes. a fantastic I'm, show and. Uh, well, the, uh, uh, well, what I would say is what's changed since June, uh, when we talked about kind of where we were taking storage, converged storage architecture and, and driving storage closer to applications, what's changed since then is over the last couple of weeks, we've made some uh, product announcements really to, to show what we mean by converged storage. And, and uh, we, we're talking a lot about how you uh, in fact, drawing a lot of similarities with what VMware's done with compute, vMotion and things like that, we're doing that now with data amongst systems in the yeah, data yeah. center. So uh, so I was on theCUBE yesterday, David Scott was on, I was getting some comments from our director. It's like, come on, you got to hit him up on the HP question. A lot's changed at HP, some turmoil at the top, obviously, controversy. And I said, look, I don't, I don't want to go there because one, I know they're not going to say anything, so just say no comment. Okay, they're going to say no comment, but more importantly, I wanted to highlight the performance that you guys are doing right now. So, yes, so was there a question there, John? Were you question, asking okay. me a question? What do you think you about that question? What do you think about the PC I was going to say, you got to buy me dinner or something if you're going to go Should you exit there. the PC business? <laughs> no. Next uh, question. That's my, that's my yeah, opinion. Sorry, no comment. No comment. <laughs> got the no comment. No, but seriously, ESSN, you guys are performing really well. Mike Bannock on. Yeah, performance good. Performance is strong in that yeah. group. Is, yeah. Is booming. Yeah. So, well, we talked about this after Discover. Um, yeah, we said it. We said, all stake. No sizzle, and the, the stake is in ESSN. I mean, that, yeah. that the division is performing well. The storage division is performing well. You guys are growing. I think uh, store once and three par combined were triple digit growth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Granted, yeah. store once is coming yeah. from a small base, and yeah. three par was relatively. But you yeah. guys are essentially external doubling. storage is growing. Our uh, converged storage offers are absolutely on fire, and you might wonder, well. So what's what's the recipe? And I, I'll tell you. And it's um, part of it is just, you know, uh, bringing the um, uh, the the success to, to places like this. The um, part of what we talked about this week was something we call virtual system, right? For VMware vSphere five, and and part of what folks had no idea we could do. Triple your um, virtual machine density on the server. Did anybody know you could, you could do that? You can do that on virtual system. Um, vMotion 40% faster, run with half as much capacity. That's, that's what this, this thing allows. And so for folks who are growing into their virtualized environment, IT as a service environments, you know, it, it doesn't take much for folks to, to you know, make, see the see the right choice, and that's that's the source of the. Well, performance the was number one on on Herod's list, right? He said performance, availability, mobility, and security. So performance is top of mind right now. So you guys are leading in there. So tell us what's the update on um, on your end on performance and what new things are coming around the corner for you guys. So when you say performance, what do you mean performance? So Herod in his keynote yesterday, I don't know if you had a chance yeah. to see it. He talked about four things. He said, you know, performance. Uh, availability, mm -hmm. uh, mobility, and security yeah. for performance. They're talking about, as you know, uh, VMware has said, Maritz has said, we're going to be able to run any application, right. any yeah, yeah, workload, yeah. anywhere, and with the exception of low latency, high yeah, uh, yeah. HPC stuff. And so, monster VMs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. implies you know mission critical applications. Yeah. Um, where do you guys fit into yeah, that performance so, equation? Okay. So, perf um, so if you ask a storage customer, do you buy storage on performance? Ah, you know, I don't know if you're going to get a real strong, like, a, absolutely. That what you're going to find is, uh, especially in this environment, um, the, the 
challenge is predicting the kinds of workloads you've got and how you keep those workloads from trashing your performance. So it's not about buying an absolute set of I available IOPS from storage, it's about buying a platform that can handle whatever comes at you. Exchange today versus a virtualized exchange, it's probably a different workload and it might change over time and you don't know how it's going to change. So, so investing in a platform that can handle that unpredictable set of workloads. We, we talk about multi-tenancy. A lot of arrays do multi-tenancy. But handling an unpredictable multi-tenant environment is you know, kind of where we're focused, and that's well suited to what's going on here. So a couple of, I want to go back to the, to the growth. So uh, you guys growing very, very rapidly. Yeah. How much of that growth is coming from um, EVA replacement? as part of uh, uh, HP. Can you give us a sense of that? Uh, so the so let me t let me tell you how we are, are focused here. We have a, a, a large install base. It's continuing to buy. Um, but we have a lot of uh, 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 storage opportunity that it doesn't buy HP storage today. A lot, a lot of opportunity, okay? That is where we're seeing that growth, taking converged storage to, to those folks. And sure, we have customers, existing EVA customers, who are buying into converged storage, but you know, for for discrete opportunities that uh, are what's, in addition what, to what they've funny, got. What's right? funny, Dave, is that you know, since we've been since we coined storage is sexy at EMC World 2010, <laughs> it truly has been smoking hot because <laughs> Amr Awadala has said that storage is the biggest opportunity at many layers, big data, all kicks in there. You guys obviously in three part, we're hot, so we, we documented that. How has that changed HP? I know we talked about it, uh, HP Scrub, but I want to get the update from you. What's going on within HP storage around three parts injection into the sales? What's the uptake? Mm -hmm. What's the customer feedback? Give us the vibe and, yeah, and yeah. specifics on that. Yeah, so, um, so I think first and foremost, you can tell by you know, the numbers reported um, uh, in earnings, you know, it's, it's being very, you know, uh, it's you know it's experiencing the pull you'd expect when you go from a hundred sales guys to a thousand sales guys and more, uh, including uh, channel partners we never could dream of having uh, in the past. The, um, the 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 you know probably the more amazing performance is in geographies. We were in about uh, twenty something countries beforehand. We're now in way over a hundred countries. Geographies that three par literally had no awareness, no presence, no mind share. Uh, are you know uh, absolutely uh, yeah, on in, fire? On fire, yeah, big time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I want to touch on Federation a little bit. Yeah. You guys made an yeah. announcement recently. Um, well, talk about what it is first. Sure. Because yeah. it's kind of a for, for the for the layperson yeah. crowd. Yeah. 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 Set that up, and you know why is it important, and how are you guys different from? Everything else that's out there. Yeah. So, so, um, so, forget about the technology for a while. W you know, when you have a data center full of gear, you you have today probably managing system by system. It's not not a great way to get around that uh, because you have sheet metal boundaries around your resources. What um, and and what a lot of people are trying to get done is up-leveling that resource pool to the data center. And what F Storage Federation does is take the data services within a platform like Left Hand or 3PAR and, and, and kind of stretch those data services to the, to the walls of the data center. So you, you can really think of your Left Hand um, systems or your 3PAR systems as one pool of capacity uh, and and uh, resources that you can you know take advantage of change on the fly without affecting your users, right? That is uh, so. It's uh, uh, storage federation and peer motion, which we uh, announced last week, is the ability to to move your data anywhere within your data center. In fact, even between data centers in a metro area, uh, without disrupting users, VMs, applications, etc. So it's kind of literally like what v Motion does for a VM, we're now doing for your data. We had Savas on yesterday, and yeah. um, we were talking about, because we had done some research in Wikibon, David Floyd did some work that suggested that it, uh, the average cost of migrating an array is $50,000. And he was saying, 
I, I love this because I now have perpetual generational migration. Yeah. Never have to take an array down. Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. I can you know stand up a new array, tear the old one down, and be off and running with no disruption to the application. Yeah, yeah I'll give you a great example. The the very first array that three par shipped in two thousand and two uh, is supported by Peer Motion. Data on that array can really? be moved. Serial number to one. Serial number one. Absolutely. Um, now there's some there's some caveats here. It's 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 three part of three part. It's no right. you're not supporting yes. heterogeneous arrays. Right. At least at this time. Um, right. CMAC hinted. That might be a possibility in the future. That's what's an interesting invention required there. But but for now, you're not putting in a virtualization layer, which yeah. is good yeah. because you're not you don't have the overhead. But you're not basically allowing uh, a customer to migrate stranded capacity yeah. from you know old arrays. Yeah, and the focus. The, so, th the focus here is really taking the the great data services of the three part platform or the left hand platform, and and really you know making that. Uh, you know, available across systems. So, so our objective is really, you know, to kind of drive that uh, that that flat aggregation of resources. It's not to um, you know to try to drop stuff in front of aging arrays and migrate and that kind of thing. That's not that's not what we're trying to do. I'm going to talk back up for a second. I mean, um, I saw some IDC data the other day from a guy named Ra Rob Amatruda. I don't know if you know Bob. He's there. He's their backup guy. Yeah. Did a report on yep. purpose-built backup appliances, and it showed Data Domain and Avamar EMC having about two-thirds of the marketplace, which is okay. dominant share. Um, you've got store once. Um, give us an update there. You know, it's amazing to me that EMC has that much share. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do about it, if anything? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, store once is a, uh, uh, a disk-based uh, deduplication appliance. Uh, introduced uh, just about a year ago, uh, so from a you know from a, a, a dead stop really in the market to, to now, we have filled out a, a pretty complete lineup from from low to kind of I'd call it sort of mid-sized enterprise, uh, and it's a it's become a real great option for folks who are tight on backup window, trying to keep the capacity small. Um, the um, uh, and and part of where um, folks are trying to sort out their strategy here and we're we're saying look it's more than just inline appliances right what about um, deduplication on the media server what about deduplication in primary storage and and if you think about that environment you know you, you want to be able to move data around the environment without rehydrating every time you touch it store once is an algorithm not tied to any particular platform, not tied to hardware. So yeah, we're running it in our disk to disk based appliances, our backup systems. We could run it in media servers, primary storage, and that's that's the strategy. That's what makes store once different. It's a deduplication approach for the data center, not just for a backup appliance. Okay, we have 90 seconds, Craig. I want to I want to briefly touch on the whole we've talked about this issue a lot. Tier one. Tier one, baby. What are your criteria to be considered? a tier one class storage array. We're yeah, starting so, to do some work here, yeah, and I'd just yeah. like your opinion. Yeah, so, the, so tier one has a lot of the same performance and scale attributes th that you would imagine you know, from the old days, but when you think of performance, you got to think of how I'm handling the mix of workloads, right? Because that'll affect my performance. How do I um, um, handle the unpredictable new demand in my platform? How do I grow? How do I change service levels on the fly? And how do I do all of that flexibly, but with great efficiency? How do I drive in a, a cost structure that your top service providers in the world will, will long for? That's, that's what a real tier one platform can do. And it can deliver all tiers, not just tier one, cost effective, Tier two and three, as well as mission critical tier Expanding one. Expanding the scope. Of right tier on. One. Okay. We'll come back and we're going to talk about that some more. Okay. We'll keep Great. on doing some work on that. All right, Craig Nunez, uh, VP of Marketing at HP Storage. Thanks very much for coming on the queue. Always Thanks, a brother. pleasure. Hey, Craig, Bye. great to see you. Great to see you, man. Deal.